hello all we are into the uh, discussion of our eighth session on uh, the validity of epidemiological studies and uh, to start with the object of any epidemiological study should be valid that this validity we can tell as external validity and internal validity external validity means that the results of that study should be able or it should be generalized to the total target population on which that result is going to be benefited benefited of an internal validity is how accurate is the estimation of the disease frequency and the effect of that exposure on the health outcome in that particular study population and uh, whenever we talk about accuracy we have to know about the terms precision and validity precision is the term that denotes how far the measurements are related to each other that is it has no relation with the true value it is saying how far the values during several measurements is in relation to themselves and accuracy is that that tells how far the measured variables are uh, or the measured results are near to the true value that is the accuracy and as we saw in the earlier sessions there is two types of error that is random error and systemic error random error is that which occurs by chance that is it is due to some inter-individual variations or among the diversity of that uh, particular variable and uh, systemic bias is that which uh, someone that is the investigator or the observer is causing to the uh, direction of the result that is in the systemic error there is chance of the final result going towards one particular direction that is what we call as the bias and all these errors will cause errors in the estimation of the variables and the various uh, uh, threats to the validity of any result mainly lies in the selection bias the information bias and the confounding factors the selection bias happens when we select the individuals for the study that is either it may be due to the inclusion phase or during the analysis phase and this selection bias can happen during the surveillance that is the uh, particular biased notification of the exposed cases only than compared to the unexposed cases or in terms which we are when we are selecting the uh, cases by doing some screening or diagnosis we are particularly concerned very much about the exposed population than the other or during the admission of admission in healthcare facilities putting admission for only those cases or the controls particularly which we are going to get studied uh, study of can also lead to the bias and uh, including those selected uh, surviving cases of some disease during the study can also lead to this or not including or uh, taking uh, taking all of the uh, non responders or the uh, loss to follow up uh, in our study can also dilute the effect of our study and cause um, threat to the validity of it and how to deal with the selection bias the best uh, method would be to design a proper study method uh, that is for example using only the incidence cases not uh, both uh, prevalent cases which includes both old and new cases and uh, particularly in case of case control studies it should be based on a population based design and we should apply same eligibility criteria for uh, selecting both cases and controls and our approach to both these arms should be very equal in uh, either it can be in the um, diagnosis or in the procedures during the study and uh, at the data collection stage we can reduce this bias by minimizing the non-responders or non-participation or loss to follow-up group or there are several methods to predict these factors during the start of the study we can use those methods also to reduce this kind of bias during the data collection and uh, even though we get some cases of loss to follow up or non-responders we have to keep some record of these cases for a uh, future study of a how or what are the reasons of that for loss to follow up and um, we can also do blinding that is uh, it contains both single double and uh, triple binding and all and doing that kind of blinding can also reduce this kind of data collection when the investigator will be particularly concerned about one arm than the other such kinds may be uh, reduced by blinding
and during the analysis phase uh, that is uh, when comparing the non responders with the responders as we have to see like if it is causing very large difference then uh, it may be due to selection bias but however small difference with the previous studies does not uh, rule out the selection bias we have to keep some uh, some evidences from our previous uh, literature reviews in hand to see whether our study is little near to validity or not and also we can do some sensitivity analysis now coming on to the information bias it may be due to the uh, collection of info which is more towards a specific outcome or uh, exposure which the investigator is very much interested about it also includes the recall bias that happens during the case control study or the retrospective cohort study when the uh, participants may not be able to recall the chronology or the symptoms or uh, some minor findings of their disease and um, and uh, it also includes the investigation investigator bias in which the uh, investigator tends to uh, collect the info which is um, which is supporting his uh, study outcome and there is a term called prevarication that is a systemic distortion of truth by the subjects that is they are are blindfolding that truth and how to deal with information bias it includes precise operational definitions of the variables and some uh, detailed measurement protocols or standard procedures we have to follow and we have to take repeated measurements on the variables to see whether that measurement is precise or there should be training or certification and recertification of this data collection methods and on and off there should be some data audits of the interviews or of the data centers and there should be data cleaning that is uh, uh, that is it may be visual or computer based and rerunning of all this analysis prior to the publication also can reduce the information bias coming on to the confounding factors these are such factors that uh, uh, that actually cause the uh, effect to the result by affecting because it affects both the exposure and the outcome and the ex actual exposure will be confused with these extra factors thus making our result invalid it may show uh, an association when it does not actually exist it may also hide some association when it exists or it can have the capability of changing the direction of the effect or it can increase or decrease the strength of association of that study variable how to deal with this confounding factors we have to actually have a good hand on the literature review we have to see what and all factors are affecting our variable and we have to if possible eliminate those at the planning stage itself and uh, uh, and we can do some uh, things like matching that is our study population should be matched with those similar uh, population that differ only by the study variable and all the other factors like a the gender the disease pro process everything should be the same as the study population except the study variable and in case of experimental studies we can do randomization that is is we uh, we randomly select the uh, subjects and thus the investigators and the participants are unaware of what arm um, they are in that is either they are in trial uh, trial arm or they are in the control arm and during the analysis stage we can reduce this by um, following some stratification methods or multivariate analysis and there are some specially named biases like hawthorne bias and pigmalion effect hawthorne bias is nothing but the observer bias that is the subjects who are being studied act differently when they are they know that they are being observed that is hawthorne bias and pigmalion effect is that one person's expectation that is in that is the investigator's expectation will change the performance of the target population for example when a teacher is, is expecting more from a from the topper of that class the performance of that topper or that student will be different which is not actually the performance of him when he is not being expected and they, and some of the uh, 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 biases under respondent bias is acquiescence bias that is ya saying bias that is is uh, whatever question he is asked of he uh, he usually tends to say yes to it that is acquiescence bias and some social desirability bias is that when some interviews are uh, done then the responders will uh, try to stick on to the criteria which the society will uh, will actually expect and not his own ideas and uh, some habituation is that uh, using of the same wordings as the questions as they are actually habituated to answer a 
certain question to the uh, uh, questions and some of the sponsor buyers like some if the com if some company is conducting some bias on its products is if some company is conducting some study on its products and its outcomes when the when it is interviewed off uh, then the people actually would go for a positive uh, attitude towards the outcomes than uh, telling the real truth and some kind of researcher bias includes confirmation bias or culture bias question order bias and leading question bias or wording bias or hello effect the other things actually um, they mean by their names itself and this hello effect is that when someone or that is the investigator or the participant is seeing something only on a certain eye that is only on a certain aspect that is called as the hollow effect and in this session we have learned of some pre-trial bias bias during trials and bias after trials which we have to be aware of to conduct some trial so that our result will be a valid and uh, a really applicable one to the society and the pre-trial bias includes the flawed design bias selection bias channeling bias and during the study we may uh, experience interviewer bias chronology bias recall bias transfer bias misclassification of exposure or outcomes and performance bias and during uh, uh, and after the trial we may uh, go on for citation bias and confounding bias which we have to be aware of so that we can avoid it in our study that's all about uh, this session and our next session will be on qualitative research methods stay tuned support us thank you